Um, thank you. It's, it's a total honor to be here and obviously to meet one of Montclair's own. We were talking a little bit in the green room and I asked the team what, you know, what should we talk about? You know, what's, what haven't people been saying? And they said, well, how your story is so doable. You're, you know, this relatable, normal person with a great story and a great career. And you still enjoy your husband. You still like your husband. <laughs> you have three I love my husband. healthy kids that haven't gone off the rails. Um, and if you look at the, any of the social media, she, Bobby does it herself, which is pretty impressive. Um, and what struck me was you had this great quote. And it said, I haven't come this far to come this far. And I wanted to start there. So um, to add to the awesome bio, <laughs> You know, she has the hotel, the George, so I'd love to know about that. So after nine books, why the 10th? Why now? Oh, no, 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 nine books. I'm, I haven't gone to 10 yet. Oh, this is the this ninth. This is my ninth book. Oh, this is the ninth, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is my ninth, yes. So this is the ninth. Um, why this book, why now? And then a little bit more about, you know, what does that mean? I haven't come this far to come this far. Well, I'm, I, I, I don't know if that's my quote or that's my friend Yogi Berra's quote, but I, I have been called the Yogi Berra of beauty, so. Um, <laughs> which I could not you know, have a better thing said about me. Why this book? I, you know, I've, I've been a beauty expert and a makeup artist my entire life. And what I have learned over the years, and this was not my first time talking about health and wellness. Every single one of my books has pieces of it. But this particular time in my life, I realized it's not about what you put on your face. It's honestly about what you put in your body. And also, it's about how you live your life. And the combination of all those things together is what I think makes you an attractive person. Probably also because it was, you know, when I wrote the book, it was the cusp of my 60th birthday, which I have turned. So, you know, it's, it's really if you don't take care of yourself, you're going to feel like an old lady, and I don't want to. <laughs> Um, speaking of old ladies, you have this great series on your Facebook page. Yes. Um, if you haven't watched Facebook it. Facebook Live. If you haven't seen it, it's we shoot it in Montclair. Anyone that's got a great story, pitch us. But I interviewed, I know you were going to say, I interviewed this woman the other day, last Wednesday. Her name happens to be Bobby, 101 years old. She lives by herself. She plays golf con you know, every day. I was sitting next to her, this is a very Montclair story, I was sitting next to her granddaughter at DeNovo and I started talking to her and all of a sudden she's telling me about her grandmother. So her grandmother came up with her mom. The woman is unbelievable. You know, beautiful lines all over her face, short white hair, lives by herself, cooks, you know, holiday dinners. It's, I don't, 101 years old. And you yeah. said her life, she said, my life opened up at 90. Right. She said, honestly, my life really opened up and changed at 90. Because she said, at 90, everyone, want, everyone cared about what I had to say. People started having me on TV and having me, you know, she couldn't believe. So she's now, you know, I asked her, we were shoot, doing a shoot for my eyewear company, and we asked her if she would be a model. And so if you go to the Bobby Brown eyewear Instagram, there's a picture of that Bobby wearing these big red glasses. She came in with a turquoise belt buckle. I mean, she's one cool lady. She's owning it. Yeah, she is owning it. <laughs> um, well, that's a theme for you. We, we talked a bit. And you said, even to the point where now that you're not with the brand, you can really be yourself. And yes. so this is the happiest you've ever been. You want to feel better. You want to be happier. But talk about the authenticity that always gave you essentially an edge. And even authenticity is a buzzword now. It wasn't when you were doing your first Vogue shoot. And right. they said you, prior to that, they said, you'll never work in this town. Right. Well, when I first came to New York, it was the 80s. And you know the makeup there was completely artificial. You know, contour, just like it is now. It's another reason I hate it so much. And I just, I didn't think the girls looked pretty. And I would try to do makeup to emulate the look at the time, and I really wasn't a great makeup artist, I couldn't make them look good. So I just started, I don't know, call me crazy, blending blush, finding a foundation that matched the skin, making them look healthy. And I remember I got a cover of a magazine with a girl that was all bronzed and pretty, and I showed her, I showed the cover to a very famous makeup artist. He said, oh, honey, you'll never work in this town unless you change your style. And I couldn't. But I, another hairdresser said to me, I'll never work if I don't personally get a style. He said, you have no style. You need to get a style. It's like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> I think now I have a style. But, I think they call know. that the make under. Yeah, or I just it's think it's classic and simple. Yeah. yeah, but I guess back then, you needed something. Yeah. 
And you even, so you left the brand and in October. In October, but you said that even on your book tour, you're wearing sneakers. You're more yourself. You feel like you can drive. Is that part of your success? And clearly well, runs through the whole book. Well, it's my happiness. Point. It's my happiness factor. When I am my, when I am myself, being around people that make me feel comfortable, which is Montclair. Everyone, does everyone live in Montclair? Yeah. Or a lot of people, yeah. There's no, to me, there's no greater place on earth. When I'm in Montclair, I feel happy. You know, when I'm in New York, I'm a different person. You know, in Montclair, there's, there's a simple, there's a little bit of acceptance for you to really be who you are. I mean, I picked up my kids, you know, whenever possible with my hair in a ponytail, sneakers, and you know, that's what I did. And I live, I have an apartment in New York near a very fancy school, and you should see the way they're dressed. I never, I would have been completely insecure going to pick up my kids at school in New York City, so I love Montclair. What do they wear? They're just very fashionable. Done. They are very done and fashionable. For pickup. Yeah. Oh, there's blowouts everywhere. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's a good idea for someone to have a little blowout bar in the car line. <laughs> Uh, um, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. I think many of us have moved here and felt more themselves. Yeah. Um, so back to the book, because I do want to yep. kind of get into it. If you, I mean, it has this gorgeous blue. I feel like this will be the Pantone color of the year next mm -hmm. year. I don't know what color this is, but I really like it. Um, one, I want to get to the women, because right. also, you, you know, you, you say you've always also mentioned you have a really supportive community, and there are people that supported you, and there's great women behind you. And there's this one section that has interviews with Layla Ali and Ella McPherson and all of these amazing women. How did you pick those? Who would you leave out? Tell us about why you did well, that. Well, I left out, you know, tons and tons I'm of sure. people. Yeah. But, you know, I picked those girls for different reasons. but. That whole chapter is really about sure. confidence, and you know the great thing when you are you know get to a certain point in your career, you get to meet a lot of really amazing people and women, and you know we all when we we have a few minutes, we're all really busy, and we start talking about, oh my God, what are you doing? Where'd you get those pants? I mean, it's the same thing you guys do, but when you get to work with women who have worked with other experts, you know what doctor do you go see? What hair? You know what what do you do when you're not feeling great and you have to go on the red carpet? So it's, it's nice to share that, and I wanted to be able to share some of those things that help me with everybody else. So to use some of their questions and ask yeah. you, um, one, of them, one of the questions that's consistently asked is, what is the, one of the biggest hurdles or challenges that you've overcome? Well, there's so many. I mean, there's so many challenges. I mean, there's you know, the personal challenges of, I don't know how to type. <laughs> I'm completely you know, um, self-diagnosed ADD, so I need to learn to focus myself. Um, I'll never forget when I you know, was the class mom one year, and it was you know, probably, I did it all, any year I, I raised my hand. And it was difficult, because if you didn't know technology, it was really hard to be a class mom. There was four that year, so that was, you know. That they was, carried was, you? Um, or yeah, you? no, there was a little bit of infighting, <laughs> but I think we got through it. Um, but, you know, there's so many challenges. Certainly working with a big company, there's always challenges. I don't know why, but I just think my way is always the best. And, you know, not everyone agrees with me, so. Uh. And I like to do things really quickly. If I see there's a problem, I want to fix it, and I want to fix it now. And I mean, that's interesting back to sort of a lot of the health advice. Mm -hmm. So it spans everything from aromatherapy to different superfoods. Right. I mean, it really starts with food because I do believe that no matter how much you exercise, no matter what you do, if you're not eating the right food, you're not going to feel good. There's, not, there's really no substitute for that. And you said you wanted to feel better. And that was, right. is that where this starts, yes. where this book starts? Right. And you know, we had a conversation on the phone. Um, I was going, you know, I'm in the middle of a book tour, so I'm extra, <coughs> extra busy. I'm extra, extra tired. And you know, we were discussing how we're, you know, we want to feel better. And so I haven't yet really gotten to the meditation and stillness part of, yes, that, it's on my list. But as I've said before, I've lost the list. So, <laughs> so it's somewhere, but yeah. you know, I'm, I'm a person that does. I do action, action, I do. And now I know I have to learn a little bit of inaction, inaction and I'm still. not good at that. Yeah. yeah. So who supports you in that? 
Um, Joe, my yoga instructor, who also became my life coach after I left the brand, and he's pretty amazing. So, you know, he, he, he learned that we're not going to do meditation after our session. We better do it first because I always have to run. Yeah. So, but I haven't seen him in a couple months because I've been so busy. <laughs> we miss Joe. Yeah. Um, so what, in terms of, I love the superfoods and then it moves into almost the super ingredients or right. things like add-ons. So right. what, like, um, chlorophyll? Yeah, chlorophyll is great. So, I mean, great. anyone well, drinking chlorophyll? I wanted to ask you about that. Well, you like, know, you it, really when, that? if you, I've had it, I've, ha I've, I've had it when I've gone to like different juice bars where they have right. like a little bit of chlorophyll, they have some cucumber, some lemon. Right. And it's a nice little tonic. And since I'm so visual, yeah. all the pictures in the book, like you look at them, and I don't expect people to buy, you know, if they read the book word for word for word, you know, you, you get the book, you look at the pictures, you read different parts, and then when you're not feeling good, because it comes and goes, then you pull it out and say, wait, let me try something else. And whether it's the tip that I got from Harley Pasternak that is said, you've just got to walk. No matter what, you have to walk. And I said, well, I try to get my 10,000 steps a day, because I w usually wear an Apple Watch, he says, if you want to lose weight, you have to do 12,000 steps a day. Well, you, you know, it's not really that hard. If I go in the morning, I walk with my friend, and you know, I still have these friends. I, 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 it's our social life. We don't go to lunch. We walk. And if we walk for an hour and 15 minutes, it's like six or 7,000 steps. Mm -hmm. And you know, everything counts, up and down the stairs, moving around. So 12,000 steps is really doable but not the day you start, okay? You gotta start with one step, all right? As I tell my mother, just walk to the mailbox, text me when you're there, and then walk back. <laughs> I can't get her off the couch, yeah. <laughs> what about the days that you blow it? The days that you blow it, you just have to um, deal with it, and you have to know that one day of blowing it doesn't mean that you're gonna just blow it. You're gonna, mm -hmm. and it's not about being perfect. That's also what this book is about. Mm -hmm. There's no such thing as being perfect. And I got tired of buying all of the books that say, okay, you have to do this cleanse. Okay, you have to be paleo. Okay, you have to do this. Okay, you have to do this. It doesn't work. You ha everyone's different. You have to make up your own rules. And I'm glad Oprah likes bread. I can't eat bread. <laughs> you know, but it works for her, right. and that's great. So whatever works for you, and never give up, and just keep doing it, and just and do your best, mm -hmm. do your best. And you said you had deal breakers, like you're not giving up. I'm not giving up espresso, and I'm not giving up a beverage of my choice at night, which is either a vodka or a tequila. Right, but you did give up wine. I gave up wine because one glass of wine led to three for me because of all I don't eat sugar, and then I would eat bread and French fries, so I could have a clean cocktail and not attack the food on people's plates. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we do want to make it also interactive and interesting for you guys as well. So if you're, so if you guys um, have a question in the middle, because it is a conversation. Yes. Yeah. I know you have, you have three sons. I do. So um, I, I only have one, and I can't seem to make time for myself to take care of myself. I can't do. I work maybe ten minutes a day of yoga as well as I can. Ten minutes a day of yoga is great. Okay. How old is your son? He's three. He's three. So he's not in school yet. Um, what time does he wake up? Uh, 6.30. 6.30. Well, then you get really special time. I'm sure there's... So you go to the park. You know, is he in a stroller? Yeah, I mean, my exercise is walking. Him yeah, but that's fine. And, and by the way, that's your choice. You can also choose a play date for him. You could choose, you know, a, a babysitter. And the thing is, you have to make the time. You know, between working and having kids... And I never worked five days a week in New York. I was lucky I got to work from home and... You know, you just have to make choices and nothing stays the same. That's the one thing. You think this is your life, it's not. The kid's gonna be five and seven and then 27. My oldest is 27, so it's kind of freaky. Yeah, you have to make the time and you have to schedule. And there's exercise classes with babysitting. And if you can't, and if you don't have money for it, then you can always like find a friend and you guys could take turns. So there's always creative ways to do something. And you don't have to eat his tater tots, okay? You could have him eat your broccoli. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
Do you think women are really hard on themselves? You've been with yes. models, you've been with executives. Right. Let's we are. talk about that. For we you. are. We are. We are really hard on ourselves. And I, you know, I've got, I've worked with some of the most beautiful women in the world and some of the most well-known, you know, business women. And being a makeup artist, you're in their bathroom and their robe in the morning, so you get to hear a lot. And I would say 99% of the women take that time to either say, I'm so tired. Oh my God, I, I, my, none of my clothes fit me. Or, I mean, no one ever says, hi, I'm great. I feel so good. Everything's fantastic. <laughs> you know, but there is one woman that, you know, never heard a complaint out of her mouth. And that was Anna Wintour. I used to do her makeup. Never one complaint. She was always ready to go. Wow. Yeah, but most everyone else, you know. Had a little complaint. <laughs> if I had her skin, I probably would not have a complaint either. <laughs> and her bird-like frame. And her but beautiful wardrobe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, we could wax poetic on the winter, uh -huh. which is kind of perfect. Um, so also, um, got so distracted with Anna Wintour. But yeah. <laughs> um, do you you talk about your friends in Montclair mm -hmm. and they they are supporting. not here. More are my friends. <laughs> Yeah, my friends are over me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, no, no, no. They, it was I mean, kind they, of I'm, I'm, I did see someone this morning like, oh, yeah, we know Bobby. And so you know, I get this, I say, oh, I heard you're doing this awesome thing. And then they said, oh, yeah, we know her. We know her. Yeah. And well, I mean, like, I've been, it's my people. ninth book. It's my ninth <laughs> book. And, and, you know, my friend Margo in the back, you know, who has supported me on all my books, I mean, I would go to watch on booksellers, and sometimes there would be three or four people, you know? And then you go into another state, and there would be... 200 people, you know? So, you know, you live in Montclair, it's like, okay, you guys are used to me. You're the home team. What? You're the home team. No, so I, I, I know, I know. Home. Yeah. But how, I do, I did, I was really, really impressed with the fact that you, I learned that, you know, this morning, today she was on CNN and someone did her makeup. So she does. Well, first time I ever let anyone. Anyone ever. Do my makeup that I didn't know. I would, I, well, because I walked in really exhausted and I thought I was doing a podcast with Poppy Harlow, so I had hair in a ponytail, didn't have, you know, an old sweater on. I was like, I'm on radio today, it's great. And as soon as I got there, they said, you want makeup? I said, I don't need makeup, right? Well, we're filming. I was like, great. So it was a 45 minute filmed interview that is going to be digitally online. So I walked in and you know what, thank God. And they were all women and guess what? I walked in, I said, I'm so tired. And they said, don't worry, we have your back. And did my hair, did my makeup, and it just felt good to be cared to be cared about. Well, how do you go? It's your ninth book, and we're going to talk about the hotel too. Yeah. So, but you and you do your own social media. How it's almost though you seem like this is your first book. You're pounding the pavement. You're twenty four seven on the promotions. You're building a company. You know, based on the thesis in here, you're living it. You know, it's like your first. And most people would be. Like, oh, I'm relaxed, I've done this before. Well, I'm pretty relaxed and I have done it before, but things have changed. Our world has changed. When I used to do books, I would go on, you know, Good Morning America or the Today Show, then I would go on Oprah, and then you're done. <laughs> then everything else was a piece of cake, but there's not that anymore. I, you know, I haven't gotten the morning shows because it's different now, and there is no Oprah in her books anymore. So you have to do other things. And so I always say you always have to adapt and adjust. And I don't care if it's in your life or in your work, things change. And you have to say, okay, here I am now, what's different? And I do, you know, I do know that I'm not 30 anymore. I haven't caught up in my head with that. And you know, my trick is I don't look in the mirror a lot. <laughs> I'm serious, I don't. I do it in the morning and you know, I'll, if I'm having lunch with Tara, I'll say, Tara, do I have anything in my teeth? She'll say, no, you're fine. <laughs> So, you know, that's, it really helps. So, but it's all about attitude. And it's all, for me, what you put into everything. And, you know, I really hope that when you take a look at the book, you'll understand that you don't have to do all these things. But they're all there if you need to. There's even a thing on lasers. Because I'm not someone that likes to shoot things in my face. <laughs> I happen to, you know, look at my lines. And when I'm tired, they're bad. When I'm not tired, they're OK. But there's really good lasers to do different things so you don't alter the way you look. But that's my personal choice. If you like charticles, there's some great, like really organized, you know, what kind of treatments. So kind of over to that, some of the fun stuff. I have just a quick little quiz. Um, 
what do you prefer without thinking? Peels or microderm? Or neither? Aren't they the same? I thought they were different. I think just exfoliating. Okay. I've never tried either, but I will be happy to try either. Oh. Yeah. Neither. How many peel, peels, hands? Microderm? A microderm. But what's the difference? Not that many. What's the difference? Yeah. Hmm. Oh. But it does the same thing. It oh, yeah. exfoliates. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Pictures. Okay. Instagram or Facebook? Instagram. Game of Thrones or The Crown? The Crown. I know. Good. The Crown. I was hoping. Yes. Sorry. I shouldn't the reveal crown. that. <laughs> um, cayenne, Master Cleanse, or Apple Cider Vinegar? Neither. <laughs> Wonder Woman or Catwoman? Wonder Woman. Okay. Manny or Petty? Both. <laughs> Buzz Aldrin or Glenfield? Don't answer. We'll have a riot at the library. <laughs> Could be good for press. Um, that's really, that's really it. Um, you also said you don't look back, um, and I feel like that sort of reading through the book, like you said, I know so much. I almost wish I didn't know so much. So sort of paring it down. Wait, I said that in the book. No, you, we were talking, it's hard when you, you, you sort of described, you, once you're, I think we're all, as women, we're inundated with beauty advice and fashion advice. Oh, oh I know what you're talking about. Advice. Yeah. And then you get overwhelmed. So right. I sort of wanted to, you know, you have that sort of laser focus on, like, I right. think this is right, or I'm going right. to try this. Right. We were having a conversation. It was just about how much both of us are health fanatics. And we're both, you know, we're both in the media business. We meet a lot of people. We read a lot. We get a lot of information, and sometimes, you know, I read something that says, you should do this because it's going to do this, and I'm like, okay. And then you read something else that says something else, you go like this. So I'm constantly trying not to do that because there is no miracle. But, and also, I get overwhelmed, and I like to simplify my life. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what you're referring to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and I think in referring to the book, what would you point people to? to feel like, start with this. Like, this is doable. If you're not feeling great, what do you feel like you would say, here are some real Well, there's gems. little bits in each chapter. So in the food, it really talks about, you know, vegetables. Like that, and, and it's not, your mother told you that when you were young. Eat more vegetables. But this offers you ways to actually make them taste good and visually look beautiful. And, you know, the, the, the woman that did all the recipes in the book and also photographs the pictures I met on Instagram. Her name is Lily, and her Instagram is Clean Food Dirty City, and she shoots everything down. You know her things, and we've become friends. I contacted her on Instagram, and her recipes are there. I can't follow a recipe, but I'm visual, and I like to kind of make things look really good like that. So, the food is everything, and if you, and there's things about going out. You know, I go out to eat a lot, and. I just know how to order. I just say to the waiter, can you just, I need grilled fish, nothing on it. Nothing, no salt, nothing on it. Can I have some olive oil on the side? Because I find when I go to restaurants, I just don't like the way it tastes because I like things simple. I, I get steamed vegetables and put my own olive oil on. And sometimes I even carry a little bit of Himalayan sea salt because it's just better than table salt. So, but to me it's worth it it's, you've got to do what's worth it to you. And do you think the tools, you know, you had a great question. Do you find that once you get past, I can't do this, or I don't have the time, or, you know, people will say, like, you know, you don't put yourself first, that you start to feel empowered, and that's where the strength comes from, and that's where the use, that's, this inner beauty comes from a certain wherewithal and strength by making those decisions and changing your food right. habits or... Well, like when you're in an airplane and they say, put your mask on first. I mean, you have to take care of yourself first or you can't take care of who's next to you. And, you know, you, you want to feel good. And the only way to feel good... I'm sorry, I wish we could feel good eating potato chips and hamburgers and... You can't. You know, even if you're lucky enough not to gain weight when you eat those foods, after a while, you can't feel good. And you know, you know what you know what you can't should do and you know what you can do. And everybody's different. You know, but for me it's all about it's all about food and it's about drinking enough water too. Water is key 
And one of the things I did learn from someone is to put the Himalayan sea salt in your water. Because sometimes you drink a lot of water, and if you're really stressed, it just doesn't register in your body for some reason. And if you put sea salt in, you know, it, it does. It's, it's like a healthier version of Gatorade. And, you know, I once had my mother-in-law, I called, and she w sounded like something was wrong. She wasn't there. I said, Mom. And she said, I don't know what's wrong with me. I, I'm lethargic. I can't move. I don't feel good. I'm dizzy. I said, well, you either should go to the hospital, but why don't you now get up and go put some Himalayan sea salt in your water? She did. I called her back. She said, oh, my God, I'm a different person. So, you know, try it well before you, you know, do anything. It really Walk does. Walk into the mailbox yet? No, my, no, my mother. My oh, mother-in-law oh, oh. walks to mailboxes. My mother doesn't. <laughs> um, have people said that you're an inspiration to them? It seems like that might make you uncomfortable, but I don't know um, why. <laughs> I mean, I've heard lots of nice things, yeah. I have. I have. And my friend Yogi Berra, you could never have given him a compliment either. No, nope. Honestly, he was my role model to what it's like being in the public eye. Because when I met him, I wasn't in the public eye. But you, and, and, you know, any of you guys who were lucky enough to be with him, he knew how to act like an amazing human being. And it's almost his birthday. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. But anyways, it's, you know, being humble is kind of the way we should all be. And do you enjoy the work? You're, you said you're a doer. I do. I, I love working, and I really love anything that's creative. Mm -hmm. I love a challenge, and I even like fixing problems. And I, and I love working with the team, yeah. And you have a great team. You said so. I have a new team. I do. I have a Tell us new a team. little bit about that, and then we'll open it to questions. We'd love to hear what you guys are wondering. But I think people really want to know about what I'm the doing George. Right. And then we have 18 <clears throat> right. labels. So. Right. And so all you guys know, I'm not with Bobby Brown Cosmetics anymore. So anyone that calls me and asks me for lipstick, I don't have any. I'm so sorry. I don't know what I'm going to do for, on Halloween because, you know, girls always come to my house. But I'm, I got a plan, so don't worry. Um, and so when I left the company, you know, it took, it took a few weeks for me to kind of, like, wake up and say, OK, now what? And the first thing, my husband was, um, you know, developing the George. And he said, I'm so glad that now you can help me design it. So I'm helping design the George. And it's going to be open in September. And One Kings Lane is coming in and doing some, a couple of the rooms. And it's going to be a really cool boutique hotel. And I'm going to incorporate Montclair, all the different things in Montclair. So when people stay there, they could enjoy the things in the community that we always do. So that's a really fun project. And um, I've worked on a couple products, the George Candle and some room spray. And it's available in another project that I'm working on, which is called the Just Bobby Concept Shops at Lord & Taylor. That was another project I did. Do you have a hard time saying no? Or you know, business-wise, like, do how do you vet things? How do you well, I do say no a lot. But I, if someone gives me an opportunity to do something interesting, fun, and creative that I don't know what it is, that I don't know how to do, I will grab it. You know, when Yahoo came to me and asked me years ago if I wanted to create a beauty magazine for, for Yahoo, sure. I had no idea. I didn't know how to type. And, you know, I kind of did it so my kids would say, really, Mom? But it was a great experience. I learned a lot. And I got to be creative and work with the team. So that's what I do. And that's what we love you for. Um, it is really an honor to have you in the oh, community. Thank you. And I think I can, personally, I thought that Montclair would be the end of my life because oh. I hated the verbs. <laughs> I, and I moved here before I even, I had moved kids. here the day, I, I moved here the day I came back from my honeymoon. Yeah. And I what love this Montclair place. What was like then? It was really different. Oh my god, it I was really, really was it different. Like? It was so different. I cannot believe how cool Montclair is now. But when, you know, we were first here, it. You know, it was a great community that you discovered, you know, after being here, but there wasn't a lot of things. I mean, I think there was a yogurt store. That was the <laughs> only thing. And I think there was a fish store here for like a month, you know, early on. But now there's everything. What? At Walmart, there was a fish store. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, when you move here and you don't have a kid and you don't know anyone, it is kind of strange. I got a dog. And I met other dog moms. So, you know. <laughs> well, I think it's the women who 
have been the best part of Montclair for me. Hands yeah. Um, and that's well, I like the guys too. Yeah, I do too. Of course. I think there's one in, one guy in the audience, which I'm so impressed. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> uh, do you guys have questions? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I have a quick question, just sort of like going out, kind of or up five thousand feet from the whole notion of beauty. And I know you have sons, and I have sons. Uh huh. Try to pay attention to how they describe women and what they think beauty is. And so I'm curious whether um, you were, um, given what you do, what you did and continue to do for a living, if that influenced um, the way that you helped them think about the, um, the most generous way to describe mm -hmm. a woman from a young age. Right. Well, out of, you know, my boys have always had girlfriends. Right now, two have very serious girlfriends, and they're quite different, and, you know, they're not local, and... You know, they are, which I'm so proud, they're not, you know, they're not the girl that you would expect them to be with. They've just fallen in love with these amazing women. And, you know, they're, they're beautiful, but they're not Barbie dolls, you know. So I'm proud. I'm really proud of them. And, you know, I never really talked much about beauty with them. Kids also learn mostly by watching, I think. So, you know, I think that, that they would never pick girls with, you know, big hairdos and tons of makeup and long nails. You know, I think they have a very simple aesthetic, but. Um, hi, so I'm really impressed by the amount of products you've taken on. It's really inspiring to see you let go of your original project, the Bobby Brown line, and then now to take on your lens craft, or your lens, your My eyeglasses. Lens line. Yeah, and then the concept uh, shop at Lord mm -hmm. and Taylor, yeah, that. So what would you say has been your motivator and your, your drive? Like what gets, what gets you going on the ne next project? What keeps you sticking to the projects that are worthwhile? And if I can add a tag along yeah. question. Yeah. Out of all these projects, do you have any projects that you've had to let go along the, li the line or do you take on something and just finish it to the end? Well, certainly, you know, even while I was at Bobby, I started projects, you know? I mean, someone said, coined this term being an intrapreneur. So if I'm my happiest when I'm able to come up with new ideas, concepts. Even when I was a watch young mom, I was the one that thought of the blue jean ball because I'm like, people don't like to go out and get dressed up. Let's have a let's wear blue jeans. So I just I have a very creative mind, and I used to love like birthday parties. I could have been a you know a party planner for my kids. Not and there's nothing fancy about me. So I just think it's my makeup. I mean, I which is kind of a pun, I guess. But um, I don't know. I mean, I don't have a talent. I can't sing. I can't dance. I did hop on stage with Salt and Pepper at the Wellmont. <laughs> don't Google it because you'll know I, I don't have. I a saw talent. that. It was uh, awesome. <laughs> were you there? Yeah, it was awesome. Oh. <laughs> I wore the worst sweater. Oh my god. Um, but I just I like I like interesting things, and I don't know why, and I don't know where it comes from. icon of Montclair, but I was wondering if, um, if you ever had failures before you had your successes, and, and uh, if your failures taught you anything. Well, I don't believe in failures, because if something doesn't work, it just means it's an opportunity to do something else. So yes, my first you know, failure was getting a D in math, when my father and my mother wouldn't let me go to cooking class. All right, so now I don't know how to cook, all right? So that's fine. So you know, that was a failure. I, you know, I struggled in school. I was not a great student. You know, my mother, I think, had a beg once, a teacher not giving me an F because she didn't want me to do summer school. She wanted to go on a vacation, Jewish mom. So, you know, I wasn't a great student. And of course, when you are, you know, doing different projects, I don't know why Bobby Brown Cosmetics has become the success it did. I really don't know why. You know, I can go back and one day I'll write a book there was failures within those things, you know, projects I tried and, you know, mostly trying to get people to, you know, rally behind you on everything. It doesn't always work. So, you know, yeah, of course there's always failures, but I don't really believe that anything is a failure. It's just an opportunity to do something else. Hi, 
Hi, can you Hi. talk a little bit about how you discovered makeup as your path? Mm -hmm. So I used, you know, I grew up in, um, <clears throat> I was born in 57, I grew up in the 60s watching my mother, who was 20 when I was born and stunning, put her makeup on. I just was in awe. She was so glamorous and beautiful and I never felt attractive. So I used to watch her and not, f and I remember not feeling that I was as pretty as she was. I loved, I just would use her makeup, I loved it. And you know, it's a story I've told a million times, but I went to college, to two different colleges. I hated both of them, I thought they were so boring. I came home and said, Mom, I wanna drop out. And she said, you can't. But Mom, it's boring. She said, well, forget about what you want to, what college you wanna go to or what you wanna do with your life. If today's your birthday, you could do anything you want. I don't even know why my mind went there, but I said, I'd love to go to Marshall Fields, the department store, and play with makeup. She said, I'm sure there's a college somewhere where you could study makeup. I said, I don't want to go to beauty school. She said, I bet there's a college. So I went to the library, and I looked up colleges, and a friend of my dad told me about Emerson, and I just went, flew up to Emerson. And what I loved about Emerson was, this is where it really started for me. They didn't have a makeup major, but they had something called an interdisciplinary major, which just meant I could make up my own major. So it's where I made up my own major, and I liked it. <laughs> I like making up things, and that's kind of where it started. Great. And thank you for the library plug, too. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, I have a 13-year-old daughter, and I want to thank you for doing something for Halloween, because between oh. you and the Rosens, I mean, it's uh. like, you know, the Mecca. <laughs> You yeah, know, exactly. Destination, <laughs> trick or treating. Please um, don't put it online, guys. Don't tweet <laughs> it. We had like 2,000 girls last year, so <laughs> yeah. Oh, so I have a two parter question. Yeah. So the first one is uh, relating to my 13 year old daughter. So she doesn't listen to me, of course, but she's interested in wearing makeup to school. And when I was about the same age, my mother took me to the Glen B studio where I had a makeup class. Right. So I was wondering. My first question is, uh, what would you recommend for a parent not to say, yeah. but maybe how to guide your daughter mm -hmm. without saying something since it'll be rejected? Right. And the second one is, uh, what are you going to do when Miss Nikki moves to Buffalo? Miss Nikki, you're moving to Buffalo? <laughs> She'll ship. She'll ship. So wait, one question at a time. First question is, I've written two books for teenage girls, one called Bobby Brown Teen and one called Beauty Rules. So they're probably both available at the library. I just got my library card, so I'm going to take out some books. So the books will be really helpful, and they're really, it talks not just about how to wear makeup, but how not to wear makeup, how to cover blemishes, how to deal with mean people, all that kind of stuff. So that, and, and the Bobby Brown Studio does do teen classes. So you got to teach them the right way. And Mickey, Miss Nikki, you're moving to Buffalo? If. Maybe. Happen. Could happen. All right, change is good. All I could say in life, change is good. Because look at how amazing Miss Nikki looks with that hair. She let it go gray. I love it. And she be, I know, no, I go, I go to the room in Verona every two weeks. Another question? There's a hand over there. Oh, sorry. Hi, I have actually a two-part question as well, and it's kind of industry specific. Okay. I work in the, in the industry. So um, one is, what is your view on how uh, cosmetics and beauty products are being sold today and how they've changed over the years The department stores really changed in terms of sales and moving more towards mass? And then the second question is, um, how do you relate uh, beauty products, more specifically like cosmetics and color and um, makeup to wellness and health? Like, do you see mm -hmm. a connection there? Mm -hmm. Well, the first question is everything is changing and you know, people are not going in department stores like they used to and there's so many other places to buy makeup and there's a lot of choices. You know, when I started the company, there was not a lot of choices if you weren't Estee Lauder, you know, Lancome. So now there's a lot of choices, and there's a lot of really great new indie brands, particularly some great organic ones. And um, I think that there's also great things in, in drugstores. You know, you go into Target or Walmart, it's, and, and even CVS, you could find some good things. And they're getting really smart. They're letting people touch the makeup. So at least, you know, you're not buying something, and it doesn't look good. And what was the other question again? <laughs> 
Oh. Okay, they got to see what happened. Right. Well, you know, I whenever I was making particularly like bronzers, it was all about getting the healthy glow, the outdoor healthy glow, having your skin look really healthy. That's great. But I really like healthy skin to start with, and then a little bit of makeup really works. And one of my, you know, favorite things I do because I don't wear a lot of makeup anymore. I, you know, I don't, I just kind of toned everything down. I, I wear sneakers more than I wear high heels. I use oil and I put oil on my skin and I have really dry skin and it's just amazing the difference and how much better my skin looks. So if you haven't tried oil and there's, you know, I, I made a great face oil with the, with the brand. You could use coconut oil. You could use any oil that you get at Whole Foods. You know, instead of dipping your bread in the oil, dip your fingers in the oil, go like this, put a little bit on your cheeks, things like that. Like a food grapeseed oil or mm -hmm. baby massage. Yeah. I'm sure you've done like baby massages with grapeseed food quality oils should be fine. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's yeah. good. Um, you've talked a lot about how much you enjoy working with your team and I'm just wondering what you look for in people and how you hire. You know, I look for um, hard work, but you don't know that when you hire someone. I look for someone that I like because you're going to spend a lot of time with them. And I look for someone that is completely honest and also has a pretty, um, you know, has a little bit of an armor because, you know, when I'm really busy and there's things going on, I don't know anything except to tell the truth. And I, sometimes I say, I don't like that. So other times I say, I hate that. So, you know, you need a team that kind of understands your ins and outs and doesn't uh, take things sensitive. But I also look for people, especially now, that can do more than one thing that are, and want to do more than one thing. So I believe that in this new day and age, especially with a startup, you got to do everything. And guess what? I mopped the floor in my studio during a shoot because it was dirty because I didn't know who to ask. I just did it. And someone looked at me and said, no one would believe this. I'm like, it was dirty. I wanted it clean now. So that's the kind of people I look for, that are, nothing is too beneath them. They do everything. OK, we have time for one last question. There's oh, two. <laughs> Hi. Um, your advice and how everything changes. Um, you might not remember, but I was in watching booksellers when this one was like two years old oh. and her brother was four. Uh -huh. And I remember you looked at me as they were running around and you were like, are they twins? Oh. I was like, no. And they're like, it's okay. You know, they're not going to be this way forever. Right. And they're not. Oh. But I'm wondering just, you know, you just turned 60. I just turned 50. Um, is, there a t is there a nostalgia? Is there one time that you might, might want to go back to? Um, um, that was a million you. times I'd go back to. I would, in a heartbeat, I would go back to my kids being babies. I mean, who wouldn't? I loved it. I just didn't know it at the time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Pam, do you have a question? I did. I just, this is kind of a fun, silly question. Yeah. Have you seen war paint? Um, you know, I haven't seen war paint yet, but on the book, since we're in a library, on the book, the book, I read the book, it's amazing. I was one of the three people that gave a quote about it. So I haven't seen it. Have you seen it? No. I hear it's really yeah, good. I, I hear it's really good. So it's on my list. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone, for coming. This has been a really fantastic conversation. Thank you guys for doing this. Thank you very much. We're going to um, have a line forum in the back <laughs> towards the cafe for the book signing. So if you wouldn't mind um, lining up out there, you'll see the table, and Margo from Watch on Booksellers is already out there. And we have some of Miss Nikki's. Uh,